I'm going to move the background out. Don't you, don't you stop. Behave yourself. I recently returned from the Coventry Invert Show with some new pets. You've probably seen the short about that. In this video, I'm going to be photographing my glass mantis. Now this is something I've never owned before. I've never tried photographing, so it's going to be very interesting to see how we get on with this new mantis. Native to China, the glass mantis is a small species of mantis where most of them are light green with rings that resemble that of the lace ring rings. Just an inch in length and short legged, this mantis's body is nearly completely see-through, like its name suggests. As one of the rarest mantises in the world, the glass mantis waits patiently or stalks their prey, but once they are ready to strike, they do so with lightning speed, attacking with those big front legs so quick that it is hard to see with the naked eye. In addition, they have spikes on their legs to skewer and pin the victims in place. What makes this mantis so unique is the fact that, as its name suggests, it is slightly see-through. As it devours its prey, you can see the food going down its neck and into its thorax. This is gross, but is very satisfying to watch. So to cut all the jargon out, I've already set up some other stuff. I've set up the camera. I'll go through what we're using as we do the actual photo shoot. But for now, I just want to show you my glass mantis. He is in here. And I got this glass mantis from the Unseen Universe. I also got the enclosure from Unseen Universe. There's a video on my channel about these enclosures if you want to check them out in more detail. So as in my previous video about my current macro setup, we are going to be using the Platypod. This is their new Platypod Extreme. It's a little bit smaller. It's got more holes in, so it's lighter. Much better than the old Platypod. And we have a ball head on there, we have two goosenecks arms, and we have some super clamps to hold stuff in place. We're going to keep this very simple. Again, it's the first time I've photographed a glass mantis. It's the first time I've photographed this particular glass mantis, so he hasn't quite settled in properly yet. So I want to be just a little bit careful, so we don't want to overdo the whole scene. So we're going to keep it simple. We're going to have this one single flower. Pop that in. And for this particular shot, I don't know, again, what this mantis is going to look like when we photograph them. So I'm going to go with a dark background, which is that one, and a bright background. So this is from my dark and moody textures. This one is from my bright and cheerful textures. So do check those out in the link in the description if you are interested in these backgrounds. We'll set that up once we start to do the photography. Let's talk about the camera. So for this particular shoot, we are going to be using the Canon EOS R again. We have the Laura EF 100mm 2x macro lens on here. We have the Goldox MF12 twin macro flash with my custom made Crafty Bells diffuser on the front there. For my camera settings, I'm going to be at 1 200 for a second. F7.1 again, it's a live mantis, we're not going to be able to focus stack this mantis because it's going to be moving all over the place. I have recently charged these flashes up, so I'm going to put my ISO at 100 rather than the 400 because we have enough charge in there to carry on shooting. What we're going to do now then is set up the background. Right, I'm going to start out with the darker moody texture. Place that into our super clamp. And I'm going to try and get it to the side so that you can see what's going on. So now it's time to get our mantis out. Let's see how easy it is to get out, shall we? I'm thinking he's going to be a bit skittish because he's a, a brand new mantis, he's not used to me. Here he is. There we go, look. There's our glass mantis. So again, he's partially transparent, that's what makes it interesting. And when he's eating, you can actually see the food going down into his stomach. It's gross and fascinating at the same time. Let's uh, see if he'll go onto there. Okay, now with him being a new pet, I'm not going to photograph him straight away for that reason. I need to get used to what he's going to do. Okay, so we already know he's going to jump on the background, which means the background is too close. And from the look of it, he can actually jump better than a jumping spider. I'm going to move the background a little bit further away. Try and discourage him from wanting to jump onto the background. So my plan here, I want a full body shot and then a head shot. So we're going to go for the full body shot first. 
it's less intrusive for the mantis because we're not getting right up into his face. So we'll try that first. And typically as it is, he's facing away from me. So again, anyone who has seen the, the video about this setup knows I can just turn this centre column here to get a body shot of him and then of course he just turns around. <laughs> Let's turn him around again. I think he's fascinated with the background. He really just wants to get onto the background. I need to set my flashes to TTL. Right, I'll just set the flashes to TTL again. He's moving around. I don't really want to mess around, so I'm just going to set it to TTL. And TTL works fine. People keep telling me I shouldn't be using TTL. I've had no issues at all using TTL on my flashes. I think in the years you've been doing it, we've had one bug fly away when we used TTL, isn't it? One bug that was on that bench that we had. It was a fly. Apart from that, the pre-flash from a TTL doesn't seem to be bothering the insects at all. I do wish the mantis would keep still so I could have a picture of him though. Okay. I'm going to get him a bit closer. Oh no, he's turned around again. But does mean I'm able to take a look at the exposure. Is it good? Am I happy with it? And it looks good. We are all set up. We just need him to strike a pose for us, basically. Let's bring him all the way around. See if we can get a shot. He's obsessed with the background, man. He really is obsessed with the background. Eventually, you'll give up turning round. <laughs> oh my god. He's <laughs> like, it's just obsessed. At least he's getting his exercise. I barely have time to focus before he turns around for the background again. moved on that shot unfortunately. You can see how uh, you've got the edge of the texture, you've also got the super clamping shot. Don't worry about that because Photoshop will easily take that out. I'd rather get the shot with him now than mess around with the setup trying to fix something that isn't an issue. And I'll be honest with you, it's not, it's not an issue because we can fix it later. I mean that is a beautiful mantis, it really is. And it's quite quiet at the moment. I'm going to try and get a close-up headshot. Now, my lower is not going to be able to cope with that. Now, I have a Rhinox DCR250. I can put that on the front of it. But why bother when you've got the holy grail of macro lenses? We're going to use the Canon MPE 65mm for this next shot. Hurry up, Stu. Change lenses quickly because the Mantis is cleaning his uh, front claws or whatever they're called that he uses for feeding. He has just eaten a green bottle fly so now he's cleaning and it's a good opportunity if I can get my lens off. There we go. It's a good opportunity to get the shot we want. Oh, that's why I love my custom diffuser. It's instantly onto a new uh, onto a new lens instantly. I'm going to move the background out. Don't you, don't you stop. Behave yourself. Right. Okay, so the Canon MPE 65mm lens, it's not as sharp as the Laura. I know for a fact through testing, again, always test your f-stops on all your lenses and your camera bodies. A lens will perform differently on a different camera body, so do it on all combinations. But I know from my testing that the f-stop of 5.6 is very sharp on this lens with my particular camera. It might not be on yours. So again, get testing. We know for a fact that lens the Laura does two times. It's not good enough to get a headshot. So we are going to go to, let's start with a three times magnification. Again, we are on TTL. So I ain't gonna mess around with the flash settings because as I magnify in with the this lens, it will get darker, which means I've got to increase my flash settings. With TTL, you don't have to. Why people dish on it is, is beyond me. I really don't know. 
But let's uh, see if we can get a shot of him now, shall we? We have the gear. We just haven't got the shot I want. It's not a very flattering shot. I want him ideally on top of a flower. I want him looking at the camera. So I'm just going to give him a little bit of a nudge. Which he probably won't be happy about because he was quite happy where he was. There we go. He's coming on top now. So again, I'm just going to observe him. See what's he going to do. As a moving mantis like this, particularly shooting at three or four times magnification, it's going to be very hard to get the shot. So we want it so he keeps still. But again, I want him looking at the lens. So a side on profile is not going to do me much good at all. Right, I'm going to go for a shot. Let's get back to three times magnification. Every time I put the camera down, he stops look. You see what I mean? Every time I go to trust the camera, he starts again. Come on, keep still. That's a nice shot of his mouth part. But the problem I got is he's upside down. He, he seems to be happy upside down. So because he's upside down, the light's coming from his underneath here, which is what I don't want. I want it from the top. Now, fortunately, because I have this custom diffuser, what I can do is just turn the light upside down like that. Now, if you can't do that, obviously you turn the whole camera upside down, but because I've got this custom diffuser, I don't have to do that. Let's take another shot. Okay. I want to get low down now if I can. It's interesting, that's for sure. It's not the shot I want though. I'm going to continue now photographing this mantis. I'm going to change up a bit. We're going to change the background and I'm going to show you the images from those shoots now. that's it that is my glass mantis what do you think of this new mantis i think it's probably the most beautiful mantis i've ever seen it's absolutely gorgeous as he grows up we will be photographing him again and again but for now i'm going to leave him there i'm going to put him back in his enclosure give him a nice green bottle fly for a reward and uh, we shall move on to the next project and the next project is this shot here this is my new jumping spider. It's commonly known as the eyelash jumper. So in the next video, I'm going to be taking you through how I photograph that jumper. It's a brand new jumper, same procedure as this. I'm going to take you through it from start to finish. So subscribe and look forward to that video. But for now, that's where I should leave this one. My name's Stuart Wood and I'll see you on the next video. I have brand new charged batteries. No, let me say it again. Blue bottle fly. Oh yeah, I've got green bottle flies too, get it right.